Well, hello there, everyone. Hopefully, this finds you all well. It is Saturday, February the 5th. <laughs> yes, February the 5th. This will be a shorter than normal video because in less than an hour, I'm going to be teaming up with Millennial Mike and Dominic Costeris. We're doing the uh, Knights of the Real Estate Roundtable. And we'll be talking on another fascinating topic. And this one will be hosted by Millennial Mike. So perhaps, I don't know if it'll be tonight or tomorrow, but keep tabs on Millennial Mike's channel. And then you'll see that video up there, maybe tonight, more than likely probably tomorrow is my guess, but I'm not sure. We haven't recorded it yet. So anyway, I want to chat about something here. If you are buying real estate currently, or rental properties, or say you're working to get your first, or maybe you just bought your first, or maybe you have 15, or maybe you have five, something to think about. A lot of you watching this are younger than me, probably. Some of you are older than me, perhaps. I have two sons, both are in their 20s right now. All right, um, they, my oldest one, he just a couple weeks ago closed on his fifth rental property. My youngest son, I just talked to him and he's trying to get his first rental property. It's still a process, you know, we got a couple houses picked out. He has to get the whole mortgage approval and everything. And he's 24 years old, so he's young. Um, but he told me that he'll probably get his first and kind of ride it out for the next year and just see how it goes. He's, a, he's an officer in the Coast Guard, so he'll be deployed on a boat part of the time. Um, but he'll see, does he get his rent in? How much does it, if he has to rehab it, how much does it cost to rehab it, et cetera, et cetera. And then perhaps towards the end of the year, maybe by next year, he'll get a second. And then it'll, maybe it'll start picking up like it does with a lot of people. Um, my oldest son, he has five houses now. And I think he's told me, we, we need to talk this weekend, I think, but he may have the money to get his sixth house if we can once he can find it, all right? You know about me, I think. I have two houses I'm progressing towards buying and delays on both of them, just how things are. One, I'm getting a mortgage, one I'm paying cash. The one I'm paying cash, tenants were supposed to be out by, the current tenants were supposed to be out by the end of January. They're not out and now they're saying they'll be out by February the 15th. So if they do get out, then we do a walkthrough, make sure they didn't destroy it. And then perhaps closing will be later in the month. The one with the mortgage, we're supposed to close next week, I think, next Friday, but I'm kind of thinking it may get pushed back a little bit because there was delays, then a lot of snow, the cellar, the house is empty, the cellar didn't shovel the walks, then the lockbox was broken, so it was just delays, and I'm used to this kind of stuff. There's always delays, it seems like, nowadays with everything. But anyway, I should be hopefully getting both of those houses sometime this month, hopefully, all right, and then both need to be rehabbed before they can be rented. All right, so that's two houses, but now I've been in talks with a few folks today, and I'm looking to get, not counting those two houses, those, those are my burr houses. Burr, you know, buy, rehab, rent, refinance, repeat. That's ones where potentially I can hopefully get all, most or all of my money out, okay? So those two are in the works. And then I'm toying with the idea now of getting, I started with the idea of getting one more house, then I started thinking maybe get two more, and now I'm kind of thinking about maybe I get three more. And then, if you remember, remember my numbers, some of you know my numbers, some of you don't. I did have 25 and I sold my triplex that put me at 22. If I get these two burr houses, that might give me 24 once I close them, I'm not closed yet. Um, so then if I get one, two, or three more, that could give me 25, 26, 27. So perhaps 27. I told the missus earlier today, a soft goal, is to get up to 30 houses by the end of the year. But I like to challenge myself. I didn't tell this goal to her, but let me think. Soft goal, an easy goal, 30 houses by the end of the year. Uh, tick tock, tick tock, tick tock. I got a few things happening. Oil and mineral rights, income's picking up, coming in. Ah, uh, we're gonna challenge ourselves. 35 houses by the end of the year. Can I do it? <laughs> we, we shall see. I think I should be able to get at least 30, 35 maybe. Huh, that'd be 13 houses in 2022. <laughs> we'll see. <laughs> that might be more than I can do, but we shall see. I like to set my goals high, so we shall see. So what about you? What have you done? Have you, like young Darius, just closed on your very first house? Are you like Chris? Another interview, Darius was an interview, Chris was an interview. Chris is chomping at the bit to get his first house. Are you like Dominic and you have 53 houses? Are you like Millennial Mike with 
eight units, I think it is altogether, six properties, eight units, something like that. Or you like Helicopter Pilot Kayla with whatever he has now, 14, 15, 16 ounces. Or you just somewhere in between, or you just finding this channel thinking, what's this about buying a rental house? How do I buy a rental house? Okay, but this video here, if, if you haven't bought one yet, search through my other videos and find out other videos. But this video is talking about the potential, okay? The Maskey family potential, if I get up to 30-ish, if the oldest son gets six, seven, eight, nine, ten, the youngest son gets started first, second, third, the Maskey dynasty is beginning. <laughs> maybe we'll get, you know, maybe by the end of the year collectively we'll have 40 houses, 45. Maybe next year we'll get 50, 60, just as a family, even though the two boys are independent of me. They're grown, they're grown men, they got their own families, but they're still my lineage, <laughs> let's shall we say. So, but I've been diddling, daddling, that's not the right word. I've been piddling around with spreadsheets, running numbers, looking at where I've come in the past five years. And I'm telling you folks, if you're strictly in stocks, if all you got is a 401k, focus. You got to get started. Get on that property ladder. You got to get the first one because magic starts happening. Magic starts happening. By the time you get it, it, it takes it takes time. And nothing happens overnight. It's a journey. We've talked about this. It might take a decade or so, but you can become financially independent in a decade. I started later in life, and I also had money from my stock investing, which helped me give me a head start. Let's say a little boost to get going there. Um, but yet, if I can do what I've done, you can do the same thing in a different way because you're a different person. Okay, but the the longer you hold property, as long as you maintain it, that is the key. All right, let's change something about landlords around this country. And the change is already happening. But I'm going to stress to you, let's keep that change going. Let's wipe slumlords off the face of the map. All right, let's get rid of slumlords. So as a real estate investor, make a promise to yourself that with your properties, wherever you get them at, wherever you get them, they could be somewhere in the world, wherever you get them, you will do your best to take care of those properties, to fix them up, to, you don't go overboard, you don't put granite countertops, nothing like that, but you take care of them, you rehab them, you put down a luxury vinyl plank so it'll last you hopefully 20 years, you put paint down, you keep a good roof on it, furnace, hot water heater, you keep the stuff repaired, and you get premium rents, you don't jack the rents up, but you get quality rents, you don't get $800, you get $1,200, okay, you just do a little better, and you have ex hold your tenants up to a certain level. Don't let just anyone in that flashes cash. Hold your tenants to a higher level so we can collectively improve society. If we let our tenants be lazy, they're gonna be lazy. If we're lazy and we teach that to our children, we're lazy. But if we collectively all challenge ourselves, not just us as investors, let's challenge our tenants to make them better people. Give them a gift occasionally. I have tenants in Birmingham. I mailed a box of books, books to them. They don't know who I am. I mailed them from a post office. I mailed them a box of books. Why? Because I know they had children. I can't afford to do that with all of my tenants, but I, I've met these kids before. That's why I sent them books. All right, so I'm not saying to do that kind of stuff, but challenge yourself, challenge your tenants, and trust me, the magic will happen, all right? Things will get better. The longer you hold real estate, rent increases come along, the mortgage gets paid down, things get better, okay? So anyway, I'm gonna keep this short. I gotta charge my phone just a bit before the uh, the uh, Knights of the Round Table comes along, so I'm gonna sign off. So hang in there with everything. Stay safe, love life, and get on the property ladder. All right, Maskey is signing out.